Okay, episode 170 of This World Blows has begun. With me, your host, Asher Rogers. You know, every time I restart this podcast, every time I take a break and then I try to jump back in, it works pretty good for a couple days and then I get incredibly busy somehow. I don't have a job, but I find that every second of my day is gone somehow. Um, so since the last episode, I uh, I was having severe stomach issues, so I had to go get a colonoscopy, which is not my first time doing that. If you listen to this show, you might have heard last year the same thing, but I, 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 I recorded or I, I did an episode while I was like drinking the horrible uh, laxative and I tried to document all of the disgustingness of it and this time was not it was not as bad thankfully um, but it did suck and I did start recording an episode and then I go I can't I'm just well, I've already done it like to do two episodes where I'm drinking this Plenview laxative and then trying not to vomit you know I mean just go listen to the first episode if you want to hear that um, or the first time I did that but so I had to do that, and um, I think I'm in the... I don't think they found any new precancerous stuff. They didn't say that, so that's good. Um, we'll see what else is going on. Obviously, you know me, guys. I have chronic, insane health issues that have never been solved. So I, uh, uh, I still don't know anything. But I, I feel better knowing that I don't have um, a new cool cancer in that region, at least. So great it's a great feeling um it is you know not a f- and i mean i hate medical processes so much that it's so sterile and boring and just like you can't do anything to distract really and that's my whole game in life is is i need distractions um even when i go to sleep i'm listening to something like there's never been i'm not going to go to bed without something playing i ne- like i need a distraction just for for me to be able to sleep um it's weird. It, it, it helps. I can like do better work on some things, not all things, but some things I can do better. I can focus more on if a TV is playing in the background. I don't know why. It's It must be silencing some other insane clown circus going on in my head or something. But sometimes that really helps me focus on something else than the TV. Pretty weird. Um, but yeah, keep, keep my brain moving so that I can focus on what I want. Um... What's going on? Oh, yeah, the other day I woke up with a, a Linkin Park song. Like, the second I woke up, I had, I was singing in my head this Linkin Park song, but I had replaced some some of the words with dumplings and something to do with takeout. And it, it fit, I didn't even mean to. Like, I woke up and this was in my head going on. And it fit perfectly. And I go, okay, that's funny. And I went to write it down and I go, no, I'll remember that. And then two hours later, I could not remember it and I still can't find it I can't figure out it's got to be I mean I tried a bunch of the Linkin Park songs but it's got to be the lyric has to be the word something for the word dumpling to fit but I couldn't find a chorus of a song where he's saying something yeah I couldn't find it I was like oh man the the genius that happens in your brain regarding a a weird owling a Linkin Park song you have to write it down immediately when inspiration comes to you or you're not going to remember it uh and even when I write stuff down, oft, often I will not remember what th- I meant because the inflection is missing when you write something down. Like the focus of, of one word or something will not be written in a typed out thing. So I'll, I won't even understand my own joke that I did write down. Um, but that's that, you know, so be it. Um, what's going on? Oh, yeah, guys, it's Friday, uh, Friday, October 25th. Talking with Hands, my dear friend Matt Smith just released his full album. We've been talking about it in the last couple eps. Uh, you gotta check it out. Go to Spotify, play it, go to YouTube, play the music videos. I helped make one of the music videos, I helped edit another one. My cousin TJ made one of the music videos in Texas on film. Matt flew out there. It's a lot of work that Matt has thrown into this. So, guys, please go out there and at least try it out, okay? At least. Listen to it before you decide how you feel about it. Um, I bet you'll like it. And even if you don't, just promote it. Just be a fucking friend and promote people. Just promote the people's stuff that you claim to be friends with, okay? Be like me. Just And I do like Matt's stuff. I'm not saying that about him. But I do. I'll promote my friend's stuff that I don't even listen to, okay? Because I'm a fucking friend. So be a friend, a.k.a. a vessel for promoting products. 
and get out there, check out Talking With Hands Organic Machine on Spotify and I'm sure other platforms as well. Um, I was just talking to Matt today about the about how I, I think maybe in the future it'll be like this. I think it should be like this. I think people shouldn't be allowed to put out albums. It should be you're allowed to put out a single and if that gets enough views, if the public votes that we, we, we want more of this, then we will allow you to put out an album. Like, I think rec- mu- recording studios, we shouldn't have them, we shouldn't, you should, they should be like, essentially, the government should own them. You could only get access once you have a certain amount of views, or listens, or, or likes. It, actually, it can't just be listens, because people hate listen, you know. Um, Eiffel 65 Blue Dabba D has more listens than I will ever occur, uh, ever get, and that doesn't mean that everybody likes Eiffel 65. So it, has, it would have to be like a like system. And, uh, and I, I think that's how it should be. Artists should be only allowed to, you know, create bigger works if the public has said, yes, we like this. And I also think artists, I think artists should be, I think we should, in the future, should be this. Artists, whether it's a movie star, whether you're making music, no matter what you are, if, you, if you're calling yourself an artist, if you're going to become, if you could become a celebrity, if you could, could become famous and known for this, you should, you should be so committed to it that you're not allowed to even have children. And I, I completely mean that because I think if you're a celebrity you and you have a kid, you've essentially ruined their life already. Like, they're, they're good luck being normal and good luck having a regular shot in life in, in any normal regard. Um, that's been, we all know this, you know, celebrity kids, it's not fair that they, if they do what the family does, they call it nepotism, that's bullshit. If they don't do that, then it's like, your dad's famous and you work at a pizza shop. It's not fair to do to a child. It's not fair that Kanye's kids are living... And it's not fair that they exist. They shouldn't have to endure this sa- satanic world. Um, so I think if you're really an artist and you care so much about your art and that it needs to be out there, that you should sacrifice something. That you should not have children and um, maybe not even have marriage or relationships either. But, I mean, like, think about it. Dave Grohl wouldn't be in this mess he's in if he just didn't have a wife and kids. You should... You should be commit. You should stay in this lane. You should stay in the lane that you that you chose to be in. Um, and yes, I'm saying it's not Dave Grohl's fault. It's not his fault. He's a rocker. Um, no, that is. I guess that is his fault. He did do that. But but it's funny because I saw you know the Dave Grohl cheating scandal is funny because if you look at a picture of uh, of Dave Grohl and his wife when they first met, she is that girl that he's been cheating with. You know what I mean? Like Dave Grohl was a rock star meets a hot gal at a bar and they get together and that person over time has now become his wife and and the mother of his children so you could argue that she's the one who changed dave Grohl has stayed the same she became and it's not i'm not saying it's wrong to to change i'm just saying there is a way you could look at it as she changed and now she's mad at the new person who's acting just like she did when she met dave Grohl at a bar and wanted to get with this rock star. So, I know this sounds a little incel It sounds like I'm saying, fuck this woman. No, it sucks for her, of course. This is quite sad. But, I, I, there's something weird about where I, I just, I have less sympathy for anyone who marries a celebrity or a rock star and, and expects their life to be domestic and boring. It's like, I, I don't know. Maybe that'll happen. But I don't, I don't know. Don't know if that's how it's gonna go down. Um... But again, this could all be avoided if these people didn't have kids. They shouldn't be allowed to have families and kids. They shouldn't, these people, you're in the public eye. It shouldn't, it, it's not fair for the kids. And you'd actually be better off, you'd, you'd remain more of yourself if you didn't have those kids. You know what I mean? Like, what, it, it, in some ways, your children are, are you know, a great thing because they humble you and they, they teach you you aren't special. You aren't the shit. You're, you're here to serve and help them and stuff. That's that's great, wonderful, beautiful human thing, but you chose not to be a human by being a celebrity. So you actually don't want to be humbled. Kanye is not trying to, to learn that he's merely a man. He's, he's saying he's God. So he shouldn't be allowed to have children. Point blank. Um, speaking of uh, some, some rockers, and I guess speaking of Dave Grohl too, there's a connection here. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne just got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, or, or, or to something, I don't know, I feel like he would have already been in there, but he just got inducted into something. Okay, once again, I didn't write that part down. But uh, Jack Black was the host of the ceremony, uh, that's the Dave Grohl connection, and Jack Black's the same, 
Or he's not the same as Dave Grohl. Actually, this is a completely, I don't know why I said he's the same. He's nothing like Dave Grohl. Uh, my problem with Jack Black is this. He used to be incredibly funny. Jack Black, the the beginning of Jack Black is so funny. The beginning of Tenacious D, he was, you know, he was on Mr. Show. He's like the, the original Jack Black, the Tenacious D complete masterworks, so, so, so funny. Okay, we've got a crucial clutch cargo gig coming up, Kyle. You cocksucker! You don't give a shit! And I've been sitting around getting sick of your attitude! You fucker! You fucking bitch! I think it was, I really think it was the School of Rock that did it, that locked him into remaining in this one, like one-tenth sliver of, of part of the character he used to play. He's locked into this like one-tenth of it and stays there. And since that kid's movie, he has literally stayed there. And he just like, he's not funny anymore, but he's doing, he's doing the Jack Black the rigadoo voice and the and and the things talking about rock but it's like the character that he used to play that was so funny it was hilarious because that guy believed it so much and he wasn't talking in a silly accent originally like the like if you go back and watch the tenacious d masterworks where when it's funny he's talking like a pathetic guy who really wants to be successful or, or believes in this stuff but he's not talking with this kind of silly cartoon accent that he does now with and even like if you see jack block if you if he walks anywhere he does literally a cartoon silly walk like everything he's doing is now for children which i mean that's okay i mean i'm not maybe that's the right thing to do as an old man is to not try to be doesn't have to try to be cutting edge comedy but i'm just saying the origins of that guy were so funny i am not mad at all i'm glad because i made a connection a real connection with another human being. And then the thing is, as I followed her home, <laughs> man, I became more and more. It got ruined. Actually, now that I think about it, let me take that back. It's not the School of Rock that did it. School of Rock solidified that he's going to be a uh, family guy, family friendly character now. But it was it was actually, and I'm, I'm now fully remember this, it was their CD uh, becoming hugely successful for bros and college world. Uh, it was just the same thing that happened to Napoleon Dynamite, same thing that happened to, to uh, Will Ferrell. It's just like, you get too famous. Too many people quote you. Too many people are singing uh, what's the, whatever the sex song about um, double t team, whatever. P too many people are singing the lyrics to your thing, which means it's no longer cutting edge funny. It means it, it applies to too many people and it you know, Tenacious D stuff, it really got reduced to that one sex song and everyone will sing. I don't know why it's escaping me right now, but uh, maybe that's for the best. But um, yeah, I think that is kind of what ruined it. And and the, and he just, they sugar rayed. They went, they leaned into the crowd saying, you know, pushing you in that direction. They said, sure, we'll be, we'll be simple. It'll just be about us having sex. When it used to be so much funnier, it used to be so much different. Um, so, Jack Black, you've absolutely let me down. Um, he, actually, that's kind of the voice he talks in. It's, he's kind of can't, he kind of can't not talk in, in the cartoon voice. And, yeah, I don't know. He used to be so funny. It's sad. It's sad that he's now rich as hell. Um, I wish he was broke. I wish he didn't have kids. Then he could have he stayed cool. Could have stayed tight. Um, what else is happening? Oh yeah, last uh, the, the last thing I have to point out about my colonoscopy because I wrote this down because I was so enraged by it. I before you know before I, we're all uh, I guess the, we're like lined up in beds. It's a quick process, I suppose. So like, there's a person next to me with a curtain between between us who's also about to get it done after me. But I'm hearing them prep this guy, you know, the same way that they just did to me, where they put an IV in your arm, all that jazz, before they wheel you off into the room. But so. I'm listening to this lady tell this man uh, the instructions or whatever to do an IV, and they're they're getting along just nice. And I and I'm I'm just gonna say that this man was a gay man, only to point out that he was not flirting with this woman. He's not trying to impress this woman or something. Um, they're just kind of um, you know talking and stuff. And uh, and at some point the woman. So, the guy misunderstands something. The woman says, "No, of course not." And she says, "That reminds me of this commercial 
an AT&T commercial where the uh, she, she explains she retells an AT&T commercial where a guy's on the phone asking his doctor how to do surgery on himself and and this man sitting in the bed started dying laughing at the retelling of an AT&T commercial that was not funny the woman didn't even was was even surprised she was like I yeah I mean it's not she, I mean, I could tell she also felt like this is, you can't think this is that funny. There's no, the, the person who wrote the commercial, the person who watched the commercial did not laugh as hard as the guy that's rehearing the telling of an AT&T commercial by a nurse. And that, I mean, I wanted to get up and walk out and go, this is, I want to be dead. The, if this guy's alive, this there's, there's people walking around that, will bust out laughing if you retell them an AT&T commercial. And that is, to me, I mean, not the definition of insanity, but it's just a world I don't want to live in. If people people are that, like, that's what an audience member is. That's what a, that's what a crowd member at a comedy show is. That's a, what a crowd member at anything is. It's someone who is absolutely impressed by a copy of a mediocre thing being shown to you. It doesn't even make sense how you could find a way to appreciate that. But this person is gutturally laughing and, and taking that in. And that's why, you know, there's 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 people at shows watching things that you can't believe, like Corey Feldman or, or whatever. Name the, name the bad act of any type. There's someone there whose mind was blown by that. Because they're fucking stupid. And they are part of society. And they're paying their taxes and they're living in that place they're going to be around for you know maybe 80 years in this world they're going to be sitting here and laughing and being being an audience member and making people think they're good at something when they're absolutely garbage you know it's it's wild it's a wild world um jesus christ so um where to go next uh I mean, I don't want to talk about election stuff, but I think I feel like I, I must say at least one thing, guys. I mean, you know me, I don't give a shit about elections. I don't give a shit about politics. I think if you do give a shit about politics, you're a moron. And uh, I, if I had known that the future was going to be online dating and politics, like those are the two topics that are cool, I would have killed myself when I was 17. This is the, this is the lamest world I've ever, ever experienced. People, like, uh, people want to... People politicizing things that have nothing to do with politics. Like if you I put a joke thing out on Instagram about a comedian or something and people go, must be a Kamala guy or must be a... It's like nothing... If you think everything has to do with politics, you're a moron. Nothing has to do with politics. You're, you're repeating something because you saw someone say that. And you're getting incensed because you have nothing else to do. Because you're a loser is the truth. If you give a shit about this stuff, you're a fucking loser. Because in reality... No president, no politics have ever affected any of you fucking peons. And I am one of the peons. I'm not saying I'm higher than you. We're all poor losers. There's nothing a president has done that has affected our lives. We are in poverty and we will remain in poverty. This is what it is. Pretending like you have any part of the, like, like you're part of the club is so embarrassing. By Like, well, if you get activated, if you do stuff, you're going to be you're part of the club. No, no, you're not. You're never going to be part of the club unless you get into politics and go do something. And even then, guess what? You're not changing shit, you dumbass. And, and let me just say this. Here's my prediction, y'all. Trump wins this election, and, and there's one reason. There's, I mean, I believe this. There's, there's truly only one reason Trump is going to win this election. And that's because you guys stopped letting me say the F word. And that's, and I mean this, it's because you guys said no more F word that Trump is going to win. And let me break this down for you. It's a really simple, it's actually very simple. The left has this pseudo Buddhist approach, which does not ever work. The left does this thing where we go, we won't be mean. We can't be mean. We can't be hateful or mean, right? That's, that's mean. And that's kind of a Buddhist approach. And what you're supposed to do if you do that, you have to go all the way. You have to say, so therefore, we will let you slap us and we will not slap back. But that's not what the left does. The left says, no, you still have to go out there and fight for us. So basically, by taking the F word away from me, 
you've you've stripped and the and the public you've stripped the public of their weapons of their ammunition and then said now but you still have to go into the war you still have to go fight which doesn't make sense the other side gets to say whatever they want and that's why they're winning because they can call me a we should be able to look at donald trump and say that guy's a we should be able to look at the police and say that guy's a it's helpful to say it because it's true. And no one thinks that that word means that this person is gay and therefore I hate him because he's gay. It doesn't mean that. Also, I mean, let me, uh, you know, before this gets too far down the, the pike, anytime you hear someone say something with real hate behind it, I, I agree that that is scary and I don't like that either. If someone says the word black people, but they're saying it with anger, and they go, these black people, like, that uh, yeah, that makes me uncomfortable. I don't I don't like that either. So yes, you could say the f word out of a sincere anger towards a queer person, and yeah, I, I don't really like that. But if I call Donald Trump a, f that's not me saying that I hate gay people. It's so stupid. Like we lost again. We've lost, and b because we, you won't give me the f word back, give me the word back. It doesn't make sense. Here's the other thing. Think, here, here, here's the best way to put this. If anyone out there is listening to this and going, I don't agree with that, let me just say this. What word would the right not want to be called more than anything? It's one word. It's the F word. That's what they don't want to be called. And now we're not allowed to say that. That doesn't make sense at all. Think about some Southern Trump bro Republican. What don't you, they, what don't they want to be called? Think about it. Use your brains real quick, guys. Oh, it's that word that, we, that we've chosen that we're not allowed to say. Interesting. Okay, so I guess uh, we lost. It's like, it's like you're having like a Christian guy get in a fight with a punk. A, a, a verbal battle with a punk. Who's going to win? Jesus Christ, you guys are fucking morons. Give me back my word. Also, that could have said... that's that, I, I get it, guys. It sounds... If you're taking it angry, I guess it could sound scary. I'm not aiming this word at my queer brethren. I aim this word at the appropriate targets, like police officers. Come on, be a fucking grown up. Give me back my word. Maybe, maybe once Trump gets into office, maybe I'll get some friends that'll text me and go like, hey man, you were right. You should be allowed to say the F word. And I hope I get some of those texts. I hope I have some some friends doing as they they do which is not publicly supporting me but secretly supporting me thank you to all those people out there who will secretly support me um it's just it's i mean people people fighting about politics people fighting about anything that has to do with this stuff is so embarrassing no american citizen has ever read a bill or a law that has been passed it is not true you have not read it you don't know anything nor do you care, because you would have read it if you cared. You know, it's like, it's so stupid. God, no more politics. Let's get into religion. Let's, let's, let's get into something more fun, like religious wars, like the wars going on because of religion. Um, no, you guys know me. I, I mean, I'm the kind of person that believes this, that the most merciful thing to do in this world would, would be to blow it up. Because I think you can't, uh, you're not going to solve these problems uh, that that are are ongoing because people you know they're not gonna they're not gonna you for any like let's talk about I don't want to talk about Gaza and stuff but I'm just saying for anyone who has long term uh, gang wars let's say let's say uh, you killed my parents my or whatever these these generational murders uh, that occur that person ain't gonna let it go it's not gonna happen so you literally do have to obliterate one of the sides or both. There's no, because you're not going to get that person to go, yeah, it's okay that you killed my grandpa or my dad. Like, it's never, ever going to happen. So you have to, or put some fucking money into the men in black forgetful ray, and let's start fixing the world. Think about it. Think about, like, the amount of, the amount of trauma you could erase if we could just erase your memory. That's the only way, actually. It's, 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 it's more feasible. It's actually, it's, well, it's more humane, obviously, to get them to build the men in black mind eraser. But, um, it, I mean, that could fix a lot of problems if you think about it. A lot. 
Um, so let's get working on that, guys. Get out there and... Actually, maybe I'm going to take back all of my, my anti-political stuff and say, do get activated. Get out there and vote for the Men in Black er Mind Eraser Ray to be built. Because we need that shit now more than ever. In fact, if I was a politician, that's what I'd be saying. You can say whatever the fuck you want, so go out there and say, I want to find a way to invent this mind Men in Black Mind Eraser. And people are going to say, you're going to use it for bad. And, and you say, yeah, you won't even know. You won't remember. And then that's... You gotta have that, you gotta have a rim shot guy on, on my campaign trail, I'm bringing a rim shot guy with me. If you vote for me, it's gonna be funny. Actually, no one's ever had that platform. Like, yes, there's serious shit that occurs, but like, this will be a funny cabinet. This will be the funniest fucking cabinet you've ever seen. That's, I mean, that is the promise I can deliver if you vote for me to be president. Um, maybe, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's too late now, no one's gonna hear this, but maybe by next year we can get my name in the write-in, um, just get my name up in there, just to see. Um, I'm thinking about this, you know, like, I, I used to be, like, scared of, uh, psychos when I was young, and I guess I am scared of them now, but, 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 um, but, you know, when you'd hear, like, someone, a psycho guy went, killed John Lennon, and a psycho fan goes and kills... Uh, Selena, whoever it is growing up that I would he hear about, it, be like, well, that's fucking scary. That's crazy. But now that I, then now that I'm 39, and I look around and I see people acts like uh, Halsey, I'm like, well, that's not crazy at all. I, I want to kill her. I I would kill her if I had the opportunity. I'd kill Katy Perry. It's the right thing to do. It's for society. It's like so. It's interesting to see how my how uh, you know what was once confusing as a child now completely makes sense you know just the way of life um okay just a couple of weird random things here had to say this because i have not said it yet but i did an, uh, uh, on my other channel my new channel i've been making um i, I was editing a video for it and uh, one of them had the actor jay johnston who's from mr show who was also arrested for his involvement in the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Um, he's also in the show Bob's Burgers. He, he was a successful comedic actor guy. He's on Arrested Development. He's on tons of stuff. I've been a fan of him forever. And uh, then he went on to January 6th and got arrested. But so, long story short, I'm editing a video that has that I, that I included him in, just as a gag. Uh, and I'm So I'm chopping up this footage of Jay Johnston from Mr. Show doing the herky-jerky dance, which is a funny little clip. And then... Six hours later, I go to the local Ralph's that I keep seeing psychos at from the internet, like, what's her name, Rice Girl, and I'm or, I'm buying my candy or whatever the shit I was buying, and I look up, and Jay Johnston is looking at me. He's two feet away from me, and I was so shocked, I froze. I was like, how? How, how is this? Am I creating this? Like, this doesn't make sense at all. And also, he had a... He, he, I think he saw that I recognized him, but he had this don't approach me look, and that might be because seven days before that, he was just sentenced for his involvement in January 6th, um, but he was wearing a defund the media hat that was literally a homemade, like, iron-on sticker hat, and he was covered in dirt as well, like, he looked homeless, so I don't know if he's on the run, or if he's, like, just being anti-establishment in this way where he won't wash his clothes, but, like, I... I, I recognized his face, and then I, the, the clothes, everything was very odd, but it was Jay Johnston. It was crazy, and um, I do wish I talked to him, but, like, I, but I was too scared, um, and, and I, kn I knew, like, if I approached him, he's going to think it's because of the January 6th thing, because that's why he's been most, that was his mostly in the news for losing his job on Bob's Burgers for that and, and all this jazz, so, um, and I couldn't really explain, like, hey, I was just editing a video of you for my... Yeah, I, just, I couldn't explain, so I let it go. But that Ralph's, there's like a vortex at this Ralph's in North Hollywood. It's not even in like, in. it's not even on the proper LA, you know what I mean? Like it's it's in North Hollywood, Studio City area. And um, it's a vortex. I'm seeing people that I've seen my whole life or just the people I've been mocking on the internet, they just appear at this store. I don't remember if I brought this up, but someone, I, someone that was a teacher at the improv theater I worked at for 10 years I just saw there the other day too. Like it's a vortex. It doesn't make sense. Um, but I, yeah, but I'm gonna keep going and see who else I can meet there. It seems to be like a great, a great meeting ground. Um, okay, 
Uh, let's, I guess we're gonna let this be the end. It's kind of a long one. I gotta roll. Um, but, yeah, till next time. That was 170. This world blows with me, your host, Ashir Rajir. Until next time, folks. Bye-bye. Go straight too far.